and a student i mean we don't know but they're just like you know he's not one of us so you but, know let's keep it moving you know being in the civil activism position and working with communities you, you run into this all the time don't you agree yeah agree. you know working with police chiefs and sheriffs i mean we're calling all the time about mistreatment of people and things like that that's why i believe that you know each city needs a strong naacp needs a strong national action committee needs a strong sclc because when we have these watchdog organizations that's actually watching then you have a whole lot less of this you know georgia kind of i mean not georgia florida kind of put this on themselves with that standalone <laughs> law they came out with saying you can be as you know aggressive as you want to with anybody intruding on your property you know they kind of opened that door and i see more problems with it because basically they're saying you know tow the gun and if you see something you don't like shoot them it's like but shoot now, ask questions like, later. Like, it's, yeah. I mean, and the law is so vague. It's like they said if you feel threatened by someone, it's okay for you to use, deadly, use force. deadly force. And I mean, the definition of, you know, feeling threatened, what is that? You know, because obviously, what, what did Trey have on him? Skittles and iced tea. I mean, how threatening is that? I mean, I guess you could throw some Skittles and bust somebody in the eye with it. I'm guessing that's what they thought, you know, Maybe could happen. Maybe big gulp cups. And take the tea and splash it in the <laughs> face. But, I mean, what? There's no type of threat. I don't see how you could feel threatened. This guy is, I think I read something about him being, like you said, 100 pounds lighter than him. Zimmerman is a big dude. You could see it from his picture. You know, he was a big dude. He could have took Trayvon down with the tackle. You know what I mean? I just don't understand. I mean, if you want to use force, you could have tackled him down and just, you know, pinned him up and had the police come get him if that was the case. But, I mean, to shoot a young boy, I mean, that was totally uncalled for. Uh, David E. Reddick, I just want to let you all know, David E. Reddick is also the political and government relations consultant um, for Late Night with Ed Moore III. And with that being said, I also want to ask him, um, being a politician yourself, uh, David, why, what do you think the intentions of these legislators are when it comes to passing these kinds of laws, these stand your ground laws, if you will? What do you, what do you think the intentions of these legislators are? Many, many times you'll have an incident and legislators try to, especially if it's close to an election year, they try to come up with a quick fix for that is that situation and mm -hmm. they try to come up with this law to make it look as if they're being <laughs> if they're standing strong or holding a solid footing so they come up with legislators sometimes too quick and that legislative um decision has this kind of repercussion and recall like in alabama when we you know when our legislators created the you know we have the toughest immigration law in the country in Alabama and that was one of those we're standing our ground we're trying to create this kind of political clout but we saw here in Alabama where it hurt us because we ended up arresting you know an executive from Mercedes-Benz and an executive from Honda hmm. because they didn't have the proper paperwork so sometimes we we try to make it sounds good at the time mm -hmm. but if you don't be the devil's advocate you know I, I i believe as a you know as a politician i'm always the devil's advocate to myself whenever i make a decision i try to see what's wrong about it and that kind of prevents a lot of this that you know a lot of politicians actually fall into mm -hmm. well it is 52 52 minutes past the hour here on 91.9 fm wljs jacksonville we're here discussing the Trayvon Martin case. And when we come back, I want to discuss more. I want to get deeper into this stand your ground law. What is it? Where it comes from? What are the intentions of it? What are the ideas of it? And how does it significantly play out within the Trayvon Martin case? You're listening to 91.9 FM WLJS Jacksonville. It is 52, 52 minutes past the hour and we will be right back.
Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring you life. Words on the wings of the morning, the dark night will fade away. If you speak to my heart now, speak to my heart. Mm, Holy Spirit. I can hear from you, and I'll know what to do. I won't go on, mm, never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide, and let your word abide. Say. Speak to my heart, Lord. Oh, my heart. Give me your holy word. Give me your holy word. If I can hear from you, if I can hear, then I'll know what to do.
58, 58 minutes past the hour here on 91.9 FM WLJS Jacksonville. I'm sitting here uh, with my panel, Miss Sandra Hall, who is a broadcaster here at WLJS, Mr. Lisa Raquel, who is a regular here on Late Night with Ed Moore III, Mr. David E. Reddick, who is the political and government relations consultant for Late Night with Ed Moore III, as well as the Calhoun County NAACP president and Mr. William Allen, who is with the National Action Network, a civil rights organization founded by the Reverend Al Sharpton. We're here discussing the Trayvon Martin case. It's been a case that has been swirling around the media throughout this entire week. We're basically sitting here trying to get an understanding of what happened, what didn't happen, and and why people um, are so angry about it. And before we went to the break, I told you all that we were going to discuss a little bit more on this stand your ground law and have people understand, okay, what is this law and how is it involved in the Trayvon Martin case? According to Zimmerman, he claims that the shooting was justified because based on the Florida law that allows people to use deadly force to defend themselves, this is the so-called stand your ground law. Now, CBS News correspondent Jeff Glore reports that the law at the center of the shooting was co-sponsored in 2005 by State Representative Dennis Baxley. And now, according to the legislator... Mr. Baxley, he says that he doesn't have any regrets about creating the law. He says, quote, I think it's been a great protection for our people. The intent of the law was to expand the right to claim self-defense beyond the home. It allows a person to, quote, stand his or her ground and meet force with force, including deadly force. If there is a reasonable belief, it's needed to prevent death or great bodily harm even if there is a chance to escape. Now, Baxley also went on to say, we thought the self-defense measures that we were taking about, excuse me, that we were talking about really should apply to any law-abiding citizen who was doing nothing to harm anybody else. A law-abiding citizen who was doing nothing to harm anyone else. Now, 23 other states currently in the United States have the, have this stand your ground law. uh, And when I was looking at these at the map of all the states that do have this I noticed that almost every state in the southern United States with the exception of Arkansas and Missouri uh, were states in which this stand your ground law uh, is in effect Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida South Carolina and Tennessee all of the very heavy southern southern states with the exception like i said of arkansas missouri and i found this interesting um more heavily populated state populated states with a a significantly higher level of crime such as california it's not enacted there new york it's not up there none of the new england states maine vermont new york new hampshire Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, Jersey. I'm looking at this map now. I don't see any of those states highlighted with this stand your ground law. And those states are much bigger, much, much bigger than any of the states down here in the South. And so being Southern residents, everyone in the room is a Southern resident. Do you think there is... Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Most of us are Southern residents. I do apologize. Uh, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Why do you all think that so many of the southern states have this law? Do you think there's a specific reason? I'm curious to hear you all's responses. <laughs> As a, you know, I've been a union representative. I was speaking to you a few minutes ago about a union representative in mm-hmm. most southern states. Mm-hmm. And those laws that, that they have in a southern state is, is pretty near laws that I think is wrong. And I also think it's wrong for them to have those type of laws that that you can assume something's going to happen and, you know, you go out and take somebody's life. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's right. This guy wasn't a threat to it. And you say that he put it in there because of a threat and you just shoot somebody. I think that's just totally wrong. Yeah. And uh, I think southern states are most behind on rights like that, dealing with human rights. You said they are what now? They're behind. They're behind, yeah, okay. They're really behind. They need to. Need to come up to par with the rest of these states. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they don't. They you, they got to be forced. We got to get legislation passed to to deal with stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We got to vote and get people out to vote and get them 
get you know, change laws. Mm. Do you all uh, think that this stand your ground law makes people think differently about the level 